<laughs> Hello friends and welcome back to Sketchbook Time Machine. I'm Harper and today we're going to be challenging our creative thinking and illustration skills because I've got seven drawing prompts that are guaranteed to melt your mind, test your imagination, and quite possibly even break your brain. Now I know that probably sounds like bombastic clickbait, but dude, seriously, these are just really hard prompts. I mean, the seventh one, I'm probably not even gonna make an attempt. Okay, so here's a couple of things to remember. Your final image doesn't have to be super literal. It can be an extrapolation of the idea. The drawing prompts are there as just more of a jumping off point, a way to get your mind working and exploring the idea and see what you come up with. But be prepared to explain how you got your final idea. What are the relationships between the prompt and your final image? How did you go from point A to point B? And if you are tough enough to make it through the first three drawing prompts with me, I've got three more at the end of the video that are even harder. Plus a super secret seventh drawing prompt that is so hard it will make most artists pee their pants and cry. Tell you what, we'll start with the easiest of the three. The first drawing prompt is, the singularity is here. First of all, don't be embarrassed if you had to look up what singularity means. Learning is fun! Spoilers, it's when people will be able to upload their brains to a cloud supercomputer and become immortal. Human and machine become one. Okay, when I'm creating a new illustration, the first thing I do is draw some crappy thumbnails to flesh out some ideas. This part is more of a thinking exercise than a drawing one. Imagine you're illustrating a short story or magazine article and the prompt is the title. What image would fit the title in a creative way and of course, look super cool? So I started with a full mecha suit, sort of like in Iron Man. Then I moved on to a suspended body sleeper style like in the sweet 1978 movie, Coma, starring Genevieve Bujold and Michael Douglas. Hashtag strong female character. And finally, I settled on a close-up of a human face disintegrating as the entire contents of his brain and being was uploaded to the mother computer in the sky. So then you gotta ask yourself, What's the tone of the image? What's the look and feel? The imagery? The colors? What style would best suit the story? Cartoony or more realistic? Super slick Photoshop? Or scratchy charcoal on wood? Alrighty then, that's gonna do it for the inks on this one. Finally, let's get it into the computer so we can do the colors. All right, got it scanned into the computer. Just use the straight black and white. So we have pure black lines and nothing behind it. And then dropped in this gray so we can see what the hell we're doing. Now for this illustration, I wanted to have a late 70s, early 80s, sci-fi, over the top, super saturated, punch you in the face kind of color. So let's start with a background that does that. Boom, there it is. And then let's add in a little bit of yellow. So we can catch some highlights coming from uh, behind the guy. And then let's uh, drop in a vignette so we can keep our attention focused on the main part of the illustration. And then uh, why not drop in some splatter because that's sort of reminiscent of space or energy transfer or a little bit of an explosion kind of a thing. This is the white hot core of this energy transfer to the mothership computer. And then let's boost that with a little exposure right in that area. And then let's start filling in some of the shapes. So we have the neck plug here. I'm sure that's doing something important. And the smaller neck plug right there. Now let's give this guy an eyeball and let's uh, go ahead and skin him. He'll probably need that for a little bit longer, who knows. And let's get some hair mouth gums teeth going because why not? And all right, now next we have the helmet features. These are the helmet tubes on this side. A uh, bunch more of the helmet stuff. We've got some lights and we've got some of these other units down here at the bottom. 
They've got lights. I mean, it's craziness. Okay, now we've got the wires going from the eyepiece to somewhere. I don't know. Very important, I'm sure. And then let's start filling in some of the eyepiece pieces. Eyepiece pieces? Okay. Um, here we go. Let's keep this going. And this is a highlight on the eyepiece. This is the terminator center of the eye. Ooh, ominous, dude. And then how about all these face tubes? We're going to have to do some something about that. Let's fill those in. The second set of face tubes right there. Fantastic. And then we have the antenna all over the place. Just regular steel colored. Let's boost and glow some of those tips just because, you know, energy transfer or something. Put a little red on some of them. And then we're going to be good to go. Now let's move on to the infamous squares. Boom, there they are. And uh, we've got a slight gradient happening, blue to green on these. But then I thought, well, that's a little too saturated, too dark. Let's lighten those up. Maybe uh, match that background a little bit better. And then let's put a little yellow on the edges of some of them to bring in that background even more. Uh, we've got an eye glow, a secondary eye glow. And then uh, having all the ink black seemed a little bit too dark, so I switched it over to a really, really dark purple. It's very subtle. Here it goes. Ready? Blink, blink. One more time. Blink, blink. It's a super, super subtle change, but it'll look good in the overall picture in the end. Now let's start messing with some of the levels on this to get some separation between the planes here. So we've got this one. It's going to darken that up, bring that stuff to the foreground. And then we've got this one, which is working on the skin there. And we've got this brightness for the cheek, which will boost up even more in just a few minutes. And we have this level, which is really darkening down that skin just a little bit more. Um, so now let's drop in some shadows because this stuff looks really flat right now. So, uh, we've got these ones and those ones and all kinds of shadows. We've got these ones over here. We've got this big one on the neck plug and then, uh, shadows on the eyepiece right here. And we've got this heavy shadow on this piece, the big dark one on top, and then on the face tubes, the main face tubes. And a little bit darker here. We've got some shadows on the helmet. Sort of give that some shape and some volume. And this piece and this ear highlight didn't do much, but moving on. We have this shadow in the ear. And then the first skin shadow to really give us some definition here. Really say, oh, okay, that's definitely darker. We're helping it out, catching some volume off of that. We've got the secondary face tube shadows, the green ones right here, and rock and roll. And moving on, we also have the highlights for the cheek and arm and chest. So let's catch a little more light right there, start to boost it up even more. Now, as a cheat, as a tricky little Photoshop cheat, you can take a copy of your original line work and color it and then lay it on the edge of the main line work. It looks like this. It's a, it's a subtle change. It's a shift that helps you catch some light right on the edge. Are you ready? Here it goes. Bing. Right? So especially like in here, you can see these, these edges, these edges. Let's try it one more time. That's off. That's on. Right? You can really catch those edges. Gives you some more volume and some boost. Like I said, it's a cute little Photoshop trick. You know, guilty. Guilty as charged. I use everything I can. Okay, now if that wasn't busy enough and already looked like I'm trying to stuff 20 pounds of shit into a five pound bag, I added in some computery looking binary code lines. There's these ones, these ones, there's these ones, and there's one more set right in front. And yeah, that probably looks familiar since the movie came out, what, 100 years ago now. It just looks like you gave it the Matrix treatment. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Anyway, that's what I did for the first prompt. The singularity is here.
All right, that one wasn't really that hard. So let's take it up a couple of notches with this next one and make it even more difficult. The second drawing prompt made to break your brain is The Trial of Dagmont Fortuna. So back to thumbnails for idea building. I started with an image that would be before the prompt. It's a trial, but what did Dagmont do in the first place to end up on trial? I thought maybe he was a cat burglar who accidentally killed someone while stealing a priceless Incan statuette. So then I tried an image during the prompt, Dagmont at his actual trial. But surprise, it was too literal and boring. And finally, I chose an event that might happen after the prompt. He was found guilty and got the chair. By the way, when I was looking for reference for the electric chair, Google showed me this. Uh, yeah, not quite Google. And then, at the last minute, I decided to move the image back in time 150 years and make it a rope instead of a seated shocker. Using an image before or after the prompt is usually a better way to go because it creates exciting questions for the viewer. What did he do? What happened at the trial? Was he really guilty or was it a setup? Is that even the real Mr. Fortuna? All right, inks are done on that one. Let's break out the watercolors. So let's just start with a simple gradient for the sky, and then we can put a little orange on top of these puffy clouds and give it that sunset effect. Now, as far as the tree goes, it's really, really close up here in the foreground, so it needs to be pretty dark to get that separation. Same with the noose. We really wanna keep these elements separated from the other stuff in the illustration. Let's go ahead and run a base color on the ground and the mountains, and then come back in with another pass at this same color to really darken it up and really bring it forward. All right, as far as Dagmont goes, he's a bad guy, so he's wearing black, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, this ain't looking that great. Matter of fact, it looks like a total piece of shit is what it looks like. And this stupid drawing. Well, what can I tell you? Sometimes you just got to know when to call it and cut your losses. Just rip that band-aid off and move on. Hey, here's a pro tip. Make sure you scan your inks, even if you don't think you're going to use them. Just might save your ass one day. All right, here we are back at the computer. Same kind of scanning. We've got a pure black line, nothing behind it. For this illustration, I really wanted to have that classic Western feel. It's uh, early dusk. You know, poor Dagmont here is going to get the rope, or maybe he'll escape. Who knows? So let's drop in a background that sort of reflects that. There we go. And then let's boost it a little bit with this orange right here, just a tiny bit. Let's go ahead and drop in the ground, and then let's put the mountains on top of that. So for this, I used a texture brush just to get that sweet, sweet dirt look. And uh, let's see, for back here in the mountains, if you'll notice, uh, this ink color has been changed to a dark reddish brown. It's not black like the rest of it. And that just really helps push those mountains way, way back into the background. Alrighty then, let's move on. We've got next, we've got some puffy clouds. Now in the original, they had lines around them, uh, but that looked really heavy and clunky and not very cloud-like. So I took those off, just popped these in here. Let's give those a nice little orange tint as well keep that sun, sunset uh, feel going. And then just a simple shadow on top of that. All right, awesome. Next up, let's talk to Bob Ross and drop this tree in here. There we go, let's change that color, more like that. And then since this guy is uh, really close to the camera, way up in the foreground, we need like a nice heavy shadow on him to darken him up. Boom, there we go, rock and roll. Okay, first up, let's talk about Dagmont himself. Mr. Bad Guy in this story. Let's lay in a flat and then go ahead and drop in all of his just local colors. And right now that looks pretty, it's very, it's very bright. It sort of clashes with what we've got going on in the environment here, but we'll change that in a little bit. Next up is the sheriff. Let's go ahead and drop in all of his stuff all the way up to there. And then let's go ahead and give him the star that really gives him his power not of Castle Grayskull, but, you know, of the law. 
and all of that kind of stuff. All right, next up is this guy. Could be his deputy, could be just a helpful stranger. I mean, who knows? Let's go ahead and drop him in there. Boom. Okay, so again, this is pretty, pretty super saturated. So let's bring the saturation down on those guys. It's just very subtle, very subtle, you know, but you can, it'll help, uh, in the end, it will help our overall look. Um, okay, so next up, we've got to have the noose right here. The noose is also way in the foreground, so it's going to need a heavier shadow to really bring it forward. Push those guys back just a little bit. And now let's go ahead and drop in some shadows uh, so we can get sort of that feel of sunset is back here behind these guys. Keep that look and feel going. There's his shadow. There's the sheriff's shadow and Dagmon's shadow. Um, now let's go ahead and brighten these guys up a little bit too because they seem a little bit dark for the environment right now. So let's just boop right there. Boom. Just enough sort of bring them more into the environment and then let's see down here let's go ahead and keep selling this whole shadow thing with some cast shadows boom there we go fantastic and the last shadow we should probably put in a little something in the mountains back here sort of help sell that a little bit more boom there it is purple mountains majesty right there all right that's about it for the second prompt the Trial of Dagmont Fortuna. Okay, that one was pretty tough, I gotta admit. Now this next one is about the same in difficulty, but it's a little more vague. I think it's gonna be open to a wider range of interpretation. So, the third drawing prompt made to melt your mind is... Cheap Shots and Treachery. Working out the ideas for this one, I started with an 18th century pistol duel, and one of the guys is cheating. What a gentleman. Then I couldn't think of anything, so I drew a cheeseball cartoon. And finally, I settled on the idea of two guys playing chess, each with a pistol under the table. I figure they're both really good at the game, you know, where you have to be thinking three moves ahead. But they're also a couple of backstabbing scumbags who enjoy having the unfair advantage. Okay, that's going to do it for the inks on this one. Let's head over to Photoshop and lay in some color. Alright, so for this one I wanted to try a mid-century modern 50s, 60s illustration rendering style. Uh, now whether I pulled it off or not, you be the judge. Okay, we've got the scan set up in here, and for this one, we wanna have a color scheme that's like a purple, green, and yellow. Uh, pretty popular um, scheme of that era. So let's drop in some purple, and then uh, put some green on top of that. Again, using a simple texture brush uh, with a mask, just to open that green up and let some of the purple come through. I've got two shades of green here. This one's darker. You've got this light band coming across here to keep your attention focused right here on the important parts. Uh, now these guys are gonna need some sort of shadow to ground them, so there we go, because there's not a super heavy background on this. Um, and then let's drop a, a levels on there, just sort of boost that up a little bit. And then next, let's do a, a misregistration with the actual ink lines. Boom, in pink. Uh, looks kind of crazy right now, but we'll We'll come back to that. Uh, moving on to the table, we've got sort of the bottom, the middle, and then the top. Again, keeping it nice and light here, keeping your attention focused right there. Speaking of attention, let's move on to where the queen is taking the knight and drop in a nice grabber like that. Um, let's see, we've got the chessboard here. We've got the um, darker pieces and the lighter pieces for the chess game itself. All right, now let's drop in some flats on this front guy here. We'll just drop a base flat right there, and then let's go ahead and go a little bit lighter on top of that. And again, with a mask, just letting that back color show through the front color. And let's do the same thing for this other dude over here. Boom, boom, there they go. Okay, now let's, uh, let's go ahead and add on just a super bright. So we got like sort of a dark, a mid, and let's go for a bright. Uh, highlight on the inside like that just to bring your keep your attention coming in 
to this zone right here. This is what we really want to see. All right, cool, moving on. Now, right now, the guns don't really stick out that much, and they're pretty important for the illustration. I want you to be able to look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's what's happening. I get it. These guys are got some guns under the table. So there we go. Let's color those down a little bit. And uh, let's see, this black line on everything for the ink work here looks really, really heavy and doesn't really match like our overall look that we're doing. So again, let's change that to like a burnt red, something like in that zone. Okay, cool. Now let's add some levels to again, sort of really hone in on this middle piece. Let's keep your attention in there. We're gonna darken up everything around that and keep this super light. Uh, now, also, uh, of the era, of the time, there was a, they did a lot of stuff that was just sort of vignetted like this. There wasn't like a super heavy, detailed background. There would just maybe just be sort of a design element or something like that. So let's drop in just the design elements. Let's repeat the chess feel. Why is this here? Cool. And uh, that's going to about do it, I think. That's about all we've got for the third prompt. Uh, cheap shots and treachery. Okay, hold on a second. Is it just me or does the bishop chess piece look like Bert from Sesame Street? No, just me. Hmm. I mean, the thing's got a head like Bert and a mouth like Beaker. Hey, that sounds like a rap song. And now for the three bonus expert level drawing prompts. If you thought those first three were hard, crank your anxiety up to 11 because these are even harder. All right, number one, a car. Yeah, just, just draw a car. Most people can't. Number two, a horse. Holy horse shit. Those are super hard to draw. And number three, a baby. Yeah, babies are artists' kryptonite. I mean, I've seen some commissions of babies that were just like, dude, don't hang that anywhere near my baby. Poor Kittle had nightmares for years. Whoa, I just thought of a seventh drawing prompt. If you don't feel bad enough about your skills yet, try this one on. A baby riding a horse. Boom! <laughs> So, how did you do on today's drawing prompts? Did you crush it, or did you run home crying to your mama? Either way, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Or, better yet, leave a link so we can all check out your work. Thanks for watching, and if you took today's challenge, congratulations. You are one step closer to awesome. And if you thought this video was pretty sweet, please give it a thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, up yours. Give it a thumbs down. And if you want to see all future videos, please subscribe to my channel. Go ahead, treat yourself. You deserve it. And if you do subscribe, make sure you hit the notifications bell. And that way you'll never, ever, ever miss another sketchbook video right here on the time machine. Later.